Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry. It's a continuing my search for historical knowledge here on the internet. All right, we're headed back to Salmonella. Um, he just did an episode not too long ago as to when I recorded this, and it is Timothy Dexter, the dumbest rags to riches story. So the Salmonella series is a lot of fun. He had some uh, really interesting, more more like quirky historical things there. I'm excited to check this out. Uh, make sure if you like this original video, go down to the description. Uh, give his video a like, sub to him if you haven't. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Timothy Dexter, the dumbest rags to riches story. Hey kids, story. now we all know that fate is a fickle thing. Some of us may try to defy its will, but there's enough small businesses with Pizza Hut roofs out there to tell you that such a thing is ultimately futile. As for most of us, we tend to have our fair share of good and bad luck throughout our lives. But every now and then, RN Jesus smiles upon some drooling little loaf child and says, You, my son, you shall be the one with all the figgy pudding. That child was Timothy Dexter. <laughs> Dexter... Okay, I have to have no idea what is going on here, but it's a rags to riches story. Okay, we're going back to Massachusetts. It's going to be like older times. He was born in Malden, Massachusetts in 1747. Okay. He had a humble upbringing, dropping out of school. So 1747, um, we're dealing with, it's even 1747, so, I mean, we got colonial America, Britain and French rivalry at this time, um, pre- uh, um, Pre-American Revolution, obviously, but going to be in the midst of Seven Years' War, so we'll see, you know. <laughs> ...school as an eight-year-old to work as a farmhand and a leather worker, but Dexter thought he deserved better, so when he grew up, he married one Elizabeth Frothing Ham, a rich widow in need of company. Gold digging achieved, he began his quest to become a true aristocrat. As his first step, he thinks, hmm, all the rich guys I know are in positions of power. I should run for office. Now, the town of Malden wasn't much keen on appointing a bumbling second-grade dropout, but after rejecting dozens of petitions sent in by Dexter, they eventually gave up and decided to just make some shit up, leading to Dexter becoming the official informer of deer, tasking him with keeping logs on the local deer population. And over statistics okay. of does and bucks alike, Dexter ruled with an iron fist, triumphantly concluding what many had already known, that there weren't any deer in Malden, Massachusetts. Could be a boring job then, right? The deer accounter. So this is, this is one of these falling, or failing upwards kind of people? We'll see. <laughs> Satisfied with his political career, Dexter then set his sights on greater financial ventures. So a little history, in 1775, as part of our growing independence from Britain, the Continental Congress decided to establish their own currency, known as the Continental Dollar. Real creative there. Then the revolution... Yeah, it was one of the things that the Continental Congress um, decided to do. They, you know, there's a couple Continental Congresses. Uh, but one of the first things they decided to do was try to get a an American currency because it'd be hard to use maybe the British pound, but have something unified. It was first Continental Congress, very very basic, um, a lot of basic things like, all right, well, I guess we should have an army, and we'll get George Washington to do it. We should probably get a universal currency. It wasn't until the later one, of course, that you get the uh, uh, actual Declaration of Independence, though. So it uh, looks like colonies are stabbing the British. Okay, so let's go back and uh, see that again. Decided New money. to establish their own currency, known as the Continental Dollar. Real creative there. Then the Revolutionary War started, and it dawned on people that these pieces of paper wouldn't be very useful in a giant pile of wet tea and smoldering patriots, causing their value to do one of those horny eagle death spirals. Then the Congress did, you know, <laughs> that stupid thing that every high schooler learns is stupid, not invading Russia in winter, but the other one, practically making them worth less than their weight in paper and ink. And what in So, what? Printing more money? <laughs> that has been a historically thing. I, I get that. I, I get it asked all the time from students or something. They'll be like, "Man, if we're just out of money, why don't why don't we just print it?" And usually, they, if someone uh, has the guts to ask that in in an open forum, they're like, "It doesn't take very long." I go, "Oh yeah, I guess that would devalue it, right?" And people, yeah. So, over over printing. Um, Germans notoriously did that during the Depression uh, after World War One. Were doing that, which completely devalued their money almost to virtually nothing. So. You know it, a good portion of the Continental Army was paid with these, so by the time the war ended, many veterans were left totally destitute. The aristocrats were like, well, these grass-eating untermenches did kind of give us a country, so whatever, we'll throw them a few cents and take this trash off their hands. Dexter was like, ooh, ooh, I'm a wealthman, I I'm gonna do that too. And he spent the majority of his savings buying a boat 
boatload after boatload of the 1780s equivalent of blockbuster gift cards. By all accounts, this should have been his ruin, but by some stroke of luck, after the Constitution was ratified, the new government decided that they trade Continentals for treasury bonds worth 1% of their face value. Does a lot of these stories of people, you know, that the, yeah, rags to riches do something that was definitely against modern thought process, right? It's all a stock market or any, anything works, any kind of investment works, right? You have to either have some kind of privileged information or oftentimes get lucky on something that will have value in the future. And that's what that guy's doing is his money will eventually have value. Um, and he has a literal boatloads of it, I guess. Doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind, Dexter bought thousands of crates of bills for fractions of pennies apiece. So as buybacks began across the country, his stockpile appreciated massively in value. And this informer of Deer realized that, for the first time, there were a lot of bucks in Malden. But just because he was now a man of the upper crust doesn't mean he let it go to his head. Sure, he might have purchased the most luxurious chateau that money could buy, through daily Playboy Mansion-style ragers, and commissioned over 40 statues of America's greatest heroes, one of which was of himself, with himself. a plaque calling him, quote, the the greatest philosopher in the Western world. Despite his incredibly tacky displays of wealth, his contemptuous okay. contemporary still saw him for the loud, illiterate rube he was. So they started giving him deliberately awful investment tips in order to get him to bankrupt himself. <laughs> One such piece of advice was that he should ship warming pans to the Caribbean. For those of you born after 1850, a warming pan's this be dish on a long pole that you fill up with hot coals to warm up your bed. Not much use in a tropical paradise. True. But Dexter was undeterred by such frivolous things as logic, went ahead and sent over 40,000 of them to the <laughs> West Indies. When they arrived, the local Locals didn't really know what they were looking at and decided to use them as ladles for the sugar and molasses refineries. And by the end of it, Dexter sold every single one at a markup of nearly 80%. For us Failing upwards. They were like, he'll, he'll, make, he'll lose all his money because you obviously don't need to heat your bed in the Caribbean. But they were like, oh, the people down there, oh, these actually are perfect ladles. These are awesome. Here, take our money and buy some more. <laughs> Frustrated that their plan backfired, the elites then told him to literally carry coal to Newcastle, which is an old idiom used to describe a pointless task based off the fact that Newcastle was one of the world's biggest producers of coal. The only idioms Dexter knew about all involved different animals shitting in the woods, so he took their word on good faith and went along with it. But by some divine providence, by the time the shipment arrived, the Newcastle coal miners had all gone on strike, <laughs> and Dexter once again cleared the entire shipment with a hefty profit. He was like, man, I am so smart. By this point, he was pretty confident in his speculation skills so he started making seemingly far-fetched ventures all by okay, himself. Okay, we're just, I mean, we're all waiting. Will he actually fail at something here? Is that going to happen? Like, he's failing upward. One time he had a bunch of stray cats rounded up for basically free, which sounds oh like herding cats, but what do I know? And he sent them to the Caribbean, where they were gobbled up en masse. Not like eaten, but purchased to deal with all the rat infestations. In another instance, he bought up just about every whale bone in Boston. And coincidentally, at the Why? same time in France, men started wearing corsets too for some reason. Demand went way up, Dexter's laughing. Now from an outside perspective, at the end of the day, Dexter was a very shrewd merchant. So at this point in my research, I was like, wait a minute, is he smart? Then I learned about his life outside of business. Dexter considered himself extremely knowledgeable on just about every topic. Key words, considered himself. For example, he once stumbled upon a guy painting a sign to go along with the newly built statue of Jefferson. And when he saw that the sign called Jefferson the writer of the Declaration of Independence, Dexter lost his freaking mind and insisted that Jefferson did not pen the DOI, but rather the Constitution. Spoiler alert, not oh. remotely true, he was in France at the time. An easy mistake. That'd be James Madison. <laughs> yeah, no, Jefferson. So, I mean, he's obviously like overly confident in himself because he's achieved all these things, even though he doesn't understand that how lucky he's actually getting there. But he's actually trying to rewrite history. To make today, sure. But this was only like 10 years after the fact. That's like someone today saying, Obama didn't kill bin Laden, dumbass. That was Bill Clinton. Anyway, when the painter refused to change the inscription, and Dexter started shooting at him with a long rifle until he complied. Real gentil. <laughs> Dexter made sure to surround himself with the requisite number of weirdos Why to maintain this love. Why does he care? Why does he care about that? Level of delusion. One of which was Jonathan Plummer, a man whom Dexter paid to be his poet laureate, writing only the most laudatory odes in his honor. Mind you, this wasn't just your run of the mill <laughs> what did laureate, say? writing only the most. Once was a man from Malden who thought <laughs> Malden. he got some Rogaine and grew such a mane that when 
on the can it would fall in. <laughs> laudatory odes in his honor. Mind you, this wasn't just your run-of-the-mill wise and wizened wordsmith. Jonathan sold fish for a living and porn. He just kind of went along with the whole thing for the pocket change. Besides his entourage, Dexter occasionally spent time with the total geeds known as his family. He had two children whom the New England Historical Society describes as a half mad drunk and a completely mad drunk <laughs> respectively. And he couldn't stand his wife on account of her perceived constant nagging, to the point where he would tell guests he was unmarried and that he just had a ghost in his house. Just like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a sea hag. You know, mansion built on some old Indian shipwreck or something. Timmy, please, I'm cold and my hands a rheumatic. Find it in your heart to light the fireplace for me? Yeah, plenty of that in hell, you banshee bitch. One day, in a massive stroke of ego, Dexter decided to fake his own death, complete with a lavish funeral service just to see who would show up. Lucky for him, about 3,000 people from all walks of life turned up. Though initially staying out of sight, he soon noticed that his wife wasn't crying. So in response, he jumped out and started hitting <laughs> her upside the head with a cane in front of everybody. But as his true mortality grew closer, Dexter knew he needed a legacy and decided to pen his memoirs, titled a Pickle for the Knowing Ones, which was basically just 20 pages of unhinged ranting about politics, religion, his wife, and whatever else came to mind. No punctuation. Random capitalization. The most amazing spelling I've ever seen. He um, sounds like the papers I get in class. Mm-hmm. Here's some excerpts. George Washington. Attitude. Philosopher. Tobacco. General. <laughs> and this is all just from the first Tobacco. few lines. The entire book is written like this. And just like everything else the guy did, the thing sold like fucking hotcakes. Why does anybody even try? The best part is that when he got complaints about the total lack of grammatical anything, in the second edition of the book, he put an extra page at the end full of nothing but punctuation marks, <laughs> with a little note saying that anyone who felt like whining could just stick them wherever they wanted. Oh Dexter died in 1806, and by and large, he probably should have ended up in Davy Jones's locker. But given the circumstances, I imagine the big man upstairs dropped his big deck of mortal soul trading cards at just the right moment, letting him slip through the pearly gates undetected. And legend has it that to this day, if you pray to the name Timothy Dexter, he'll look upon you kindly and share his skills with you all. Wait a minute. Share. Skill. Skillshare. <gasps> Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes funny. in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. If you're like me, you're probably tired of sitting in a festering miasma of boy stink and jewel clouds all day. <laughs> Such a thing could be easily remedied with a houseplant known to improve air quality, but you don't know which few species can survive on what meager light slips through the cracks of your squalid cave. If you give happy houseplants a try, I'm sure your dormer apartment will start to show signs of non-insect life before you know it. Join the more than 7 million people already learning today with a special offer just for my viewers. While Skillshare is normally less than $10 a month, everyone Port who Sam, visits the link in the description can get two months of unlimited access to their 25,000 plus classes for absolutely free. So please, quit your public McTurition and get your private free tuition today. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam and and thank you for watching. Cool. <laughs> Love Sam's videos. They're they're funny. I do feel like when I when I do or record from these videos, um, it's not much I can add, right? Because it's it's always so bizarre and things like that. Um, but again, interesting little side story. Those you know failing upward stories that you have there. Interesting uh, that putting it in the context of the American Revolution and stuff and that whole era. Um, being able to in a way kind of benefit from that and like with the money all right the continental money that was seemingly going to be worthless but ends up making him a fortune from the pure the standpoint of how much he ended up buying for you know very little uh, fractions of a cent or something like that he got from that so that that's uh, that's interesting there i love his book they're saying his book and it's just like full of errors and bad philosophy and then when people got mad at the lack of punctuation, because people were very, you know, formal in their writing, right? And people talk about that, like you compare today's writing with older writing, and it seems far more sophisticated and stuff. That you probably, yeah, I probably would have got just reamed and just adds an appendix or whatever in the uh, in the other uh, in this second edition, and eh, just throw in the punctuation wherever you want. So 
anyway, his inflated ego trying to basically rewrite history of no, it was uh, it was Jefferson that wrote the Constitution, not you know, uh, not the Declaration of Independence and <laughs> forcing the people to do that. I don't know, one of those random weird stories, right, in history, and uh, Sam does a great job doing that. Hey, if you like the original video, the link to the original video will be down below, so make sure you go over there, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, um, definitely do that. It's a great hoot, funny little history things that go along with that. Um, if you haven't subbed to my channel, love to have you there. Um, enable notifications so you can be part of live premieres and live streams so you can be a, a more common face in our community. Join our Discord server down below if you have not either, if you want to be part of another history community. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again very soon. Bye.